In 1975, two childhood friends from Seattle converted a computer programming language for use on a PC and went on to become two of the richest men in the world. Yet, in doing so, they would also unleash a monopoly that a judge would once order to disband. You won't believe the lengths this company is willing to go to. This is the story of Microsoft. Microsoft's acquisition of Activision is about to change everything about the way you game. It was announced back in January 2022 that Microsoft was looking to purchase Activision for $68.7 billion. And for those of you who don't know, Activision may be best known for its parent company, Activision Blizzard, although they're also responsible for such popular games as Call of Duty. Microsoft insists that this move is meant to benefit gamers and that you'll be seeing more games available across more devices, a better flexibility in payment methods, and more variety for those of us who prefer mobile gaming, among other supposed perks. It all sounds promising, right? Well, there's a reason to believe that this acquisition isn't all it's cracked up to be. But we'll be getting into some of those reasons soon. It's strange to see where the company is now, considering how they started out. In the beginning, there were just two boys learning how to convert BASIC for use on an early PC. Paul Allen was the dreamer, while Bill Gates was the more business-minded pragmatist between the two of them. He was saying, well, imagine what it's like to run a Fortune 500 company. I'm thinking, I, I have no idea. Between the years of 1975 and 1980, the two of them mostly worked on refining BASIC and a couple of other programming languages. But they found their first big break when the International Business Machines Corporation, or IBM, asked them to produce the operating system for their first PC, the IBM PC. They decided to go about it the easy way by modifying an operating system they had purchased off another company and renaming it MSDOS or the Microsoft Disk Operating System. MSDOS was released with the IBM PC in 1981, and from that point forward, most PC manufacturers credited their operating system to MSDOS. Microsoft had hit it big, and by the early 1990s, MSDOS had sold over 100 million copies, defeating rival operating systems like CPM and IBM OS 2. Microsoft released their first version of Windows in 1985, but it was the third version of the operating system, released in 1990, that really changed the game. By 1993, Windows 3.0 and its subsequent versions were selling at a rate of 1 million copies per month, and nearly 90% of the world's PCs ran on a Microsoft operating system. Microsoft officially became a publicly owned corporation in 1986, and by the mid-1990s, they were one of the most profitable companies in American history. They consistently brought in a profit of 25 cents on every sales dollar, and in 1996, they topped $2 billion in net income for the first time. By 2009, they had grown to $14 billion, but things behind the scenes weren't always quite as rosy as they would appear. Microsoft seemed to take forever to get into internet software. They didn't bother to until Netscape Communications Corp. launched Navigator in 1994, a web browser program that made browsing the web a whole lot easier. Then all of a sudden, in 1995, Microsoft released Internet Explorer, a free web browser that they would convince computer makers and internet service providers to distribute exclusively. And if that weren't frustrating enough for customers, by 1996, they were building Explorer with Windows OS and even taking steps toward integrating Explorer with Windows. We can imagine this made for quite the headache for their customers, but if you wanted to avoid the headache of missing our next video, then we'd recommend taking this moment to subscribe to our channel. But going back to what we were saying about Microsoft pushing Internet Explorer, this inspired Netscape to sue Microsoft for violating their 1995 consent decree. 
causing the Justice Department to open a broad investigation into Microsoft. The next thing Microsoft knew, they were being accused by the US government of having illegally acquired their monopoly position in the PC industry. The first trial lasted 30 months, during which Bill Gates argued, the software industry, which contributed over $100 billion to the national economy last year. But it all came to an end in 1999 when a judge found Microsoft in violation of the Sherman Antitrust Act and ordered the company to break up. An appeals court overturned this order in 2001, but they still found Microsoft guilty of trying to illegally maintain a monopoly. In the end, a settlement was reached, but this settlement has been widely criticized for not doing enough to stop Microsoft's monopolistic practices. In March 2004, our old friends the European Union, or EU, issued Microsoft a $794 million fine, giving them 120 days to release the server information, as well as 90 days to produce a version of Windows without Windows Media Player. This was actually the biggest fine in the EU's history at the time. In February 2008, the EU upped that fine an additional $1.44 billion for failure to comply. And it wasn't only their legal problems causing the company grief either. There were a few years where Microsoft just couldn't seem to keep up with the competition like with their 2006 release of the Zune. It's called a Zune, it's what everybody's listening to on Earth nowadays. Which just couldn't stand up to Apple's iPod and was ultimately discontinued in 2011. And although the release of Windows 7 in 2009 was a major hit, their search engine Live Search just couldn't seem to get off the ground. Microsoft hoped to turn this around when they launched Bing in 2009. And in doing so, Microsoft also offered to buy Yahoo in 2008 for $44.6 billion. This proposal was rejected at first, but negotiations continued and an agreement was reached in 2009. Yahoo could use Bing as their premium website and they could handle premium advertisements for Microsoft's website. Microsoft purchased Skype in 2011 for $8.5 billion, adding Skype to Xbox, Outlook, and Windows smartphones. In 2016, Microsoft purchased LinkedIn for $26.8 billion dollars. But through all of this, there was a lot of drama behind the scenes. Paul Allen had already left the company in 1983 due to tensions between him and Bill, but he stayed on the board of directors until 2000, the same year that Bill Gates stepped down from his role as CEO. Before Gates left, he passed on the torch to Steve Ballmer, an old friend of his from Harvard. In 2006, Gates handed the title of Chief Software Architect to Ray Ozzy, a developer on the computer networking package Lotus Notes. So this would be the first time since I was 17 that I won't have my full-time Microsoft job. Gates remained as chairman of the board until 2020, when he stepped down to focus more on being a philanthropist. There were some who thought that losing Bill might spell the end for Microsoft, and yet they managed to see a 44% jump in profits during the height of the pandemic. In 2022, profits fell more than 5%, which was Microsoft's first decline in three years. In December 2022, the Federal Trade Commission made their largest rebuke yet when they sued to block Microsoft's acquisition of Activision, claiming that the move could harm competition in high-performance gaming consoles and subscription services by denying or degrading rivals access to its popular content. The FTC even pointed out that Microsoft has a history of doing this, considering their previous acquisition of ZeniMax Media led to Redfall and Starfield being taken off of rival consoles. Perhaps our biggest concern at this point in time is that Microsoft might do something similar with Call of Duty, 
The UK CMA has warned that making Call of Duty exclusive could alter the future of gaming and that this acquisition might even make games more expensive while making the games themselves lower quality as a result of cloud gaming. Although it may be worth mentioning that Xbox has offered PlayStation a 10-year deal to keep Call of Duty on their system as of November 2022. Yet, as the EU pointed out, when they issued Microsoft an antitrust warning in February 2023, Microsoft could always be incentivized to keep the game away from their rivals, to which Microsoft responded by saying that they were listening carefully to the European Commission's concerns and are confident we can address them. It's hard to say what the future for Microsoft holds at this point, but seeing as their shares have been down by 22% this last year, they're sure to have some tough decisions ahead. Microsoft might have started out from humble beginnings, but between the year's worth of acquisitions and antitrust violations, they become anything but. What are your thoughts on Microsoft's acquisition of Activision? Do you see it having any major effects? And was there anything else from the story you were surprised by? Don't forget to make your thoughts heard down in the comments section.